Welcome to the SOB Radio Show, where we have fun, interesting guests, and hot topics. Each week, we offer insights into music, fashion, health, fitness, and humor. Do you have the perfect guest for us to interview? I want to know. Drop me a line on our Facebook page at Spunky Old Broad One, or reach out to me on our website at SpunkyOldBroad.com. And now, back to the show. Hi, everybody. This is Gail Carson with the SOB Radio Show. And I want to ask any of you who have not subscribed to Apple Podcasts and YouTube to do that for any new content we come out with. Um, We are having a reappearance today. I interviewed this wonderful woman on my Women in Business show. And she was so delightful, we brought her back for the SOB show because she is over 50 and she is uh, doing very well in her career. And her name is Janelle Anderson. She is the director and the founder and the president of Energy Life Coaching and works with people on um, having a better life, having a better business. And so welcome to the show, Janelle. Thank you. It's good, great to be back with you, Gail. Thank you. Well, let's start talking about What's happened in your life since we talked the last time? You were doing, uh, you were starting, I think, a podcast. You were also uh, doing some new things in coaching. So tell us about what your life has been like in the last few months, because we all have had changes in the last few months. Boy, that's for sure. Definitely. Well, I have, like everyone else, pivoted a bit, although most of my business was A lot of my business was online previously, and I worked from home. But I've had to kind of change a little bit and do more online. So I've been creating some courses, and I'm creating one right now. Actually, uh, my my jam is kind of like helping women become more confident in business and in their you know, it's usually entrepreneurs, women in business. So uh, helping them with confidence because I find that's that's a real key for women. A lot of us don't have a lot of confidence, even though we're successful and we're high achieving, we still kind of suffer from that imposter syndrome a little bit. So I'm creating a course. Janelle, why is that? Why Ah. women, women have been, um, managers of households for years and they have, you know, kept the family together, uh, sometimes work two jobs to, if they're a single parent, um, you know, to get everything decided they're they're, they've been handling, uh, kids over the summer with uh, uh, virtual learning, and now many of the schools are back to virtual learning. Uh, So women have been leaders and managers all of their lives. So where does this lack of confidence come from? Such a great question. And you're so right. I mean, it reminds me of that that commercial. Remember the commercial that I can um, go out and make the bread and bring home what is it? Come yeah, home, bring home the bacon. Bacon, yeah, fry it right. up in a pan. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Yeah, women are amazing. And my mission is to help every woman I can to see how truly amazing they are. Um, there's a lot of research around this. I've been reading a lot of books where they've done research, you know, The Confidence Code and some other books where they've really looked at this and tried to figure out why women tend to, even though they've done a lot and they've achieved a lot, they're still struggling. And it's a combination of things. Uh, it's partly, you know, gender stereotyping. It's partly cultural messages we've received from the time we were little girls, you know, all through history. Um, I know when you and I were younger, you know, the at least I remember, you know, women on TV, TV shows, they were always in a dress and heels and at home, you know, and that was <laughs> that was the image we had of what women did. They stayed home, but they stayed dressed up and, you know, so. That's a part of it. I think that gets into our internal programming and subconsciously, you know, we have these, these messages, but it's also overtly like in the work workplace, many women run up against that, uh, gender bias a lot, you know, and there, uh, there are men out there and even other women who, who say things and do things that, uh, carry those messages that, you know, you're a woman, so you shouldn't be aggressive or you shouldn't talk. You shouldn't speak up. You shouldn't do this. And you have to work twice as hard to be recognized. And so that's a big part of it. And then, uh, the other part I feel is women don't know who they are and 
and doing that deep dive into really discovering, oh, I ha- I'm unique in this way. I have this strength. We're so busy looking at our weaknesses and our wrinkles and our flaws that we don't spend the time really getting to know who we are. And as, as we do that, then I think confidence starts to grow. I know I've seen that in my own life. Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, as I've said many times on my shows, I was very lucky to have a mom who, who said to my sister and I, you know, when you get out of college, you better have a job because you're going to support yourselves and don't ever depend on a man for money. Good. Do it yourself. So I was very fortunate. And, and of course, although my sister and I were totally different characters and we took totally different paths, she's a psychotherapist. Um, she and I have been very successful in our careers. She's uh, received, I think, five Lifetime Achievement Awards. I've received five Lifetime Achievement Awards. And, you know, I think it's um, a a basis of of your own beliefs and and looking at where you come from and uh, what you've, you've, you know, I never could work for anybody. I was just, you know, I knew I could never hold a job because if I, someone said do this and I thought it was wrong, I wouldn't do it. Right. So uh, I knew I was going to have my own business all my life. And I was in business at 21 and I've been in business ever since. However, um, the other thing was I did a lot about 20 years ago of teaching leadership skills to women. And I was amazed how many women in my programs said they prefer to work for a man not for another woman, which I thought was sacrilegious at the time. And they also said that um, that women were very nasty to them. The women in authority were very nasty to them. And I suppose some of that still goes on today, but I think women are far more uh, broad-minded and much more willing to help each other at this point because they've seen what has happened, you know, with a lot of male leadership and also the fact that there are men out there who are willing to give women the chance and the break. And there are some men, Janelle, who are saying, well, if I am a white male, I am disadvantaged because of all the work on gender bias and also on racial bias. So uh, there's so many changes that are going on now. So what is your advice to women to gain more confidence? What are the tips that you give them? Well, again, you know, I really feel that whatever's happening outside of you, whatever another person's uh, agenda or attitude is, whether they're supportive or not, you know, there are still some women who, who mistreat other women. I have a client right now who deals with that with her CEO. Um, But you're right. You know, most, most of that is changing. Thankfully, women are supporting each other more. And there are a lot of men that are very supportive, but no matter what you're encountering, with other people, it's up to you to decide how you're going to respond and how you're going to look at yourself. And I, I've been saying this a lot lately, how you value yourself is the most important thing because uh, you're training other people how to value you. If you don't value yourself, if you're giving that away, if you're expecting to get that from somebody else because you don't value yourself, then that's where you're going to run into trouble. But if you value yourself, you see the value in you and you own it, then that's that fearless confidence I talk about all the time that you can step into your position or or make your voice heard or speak up. And you're not, you're not waiting for recognition, although that's nice, but you're not depending on that other person's opinion of you because you value yourself. And I I really think that's the place to start. So mindset has a lot to do with this. So we've been talking a lot on some of my other shows about mindset. And to me, mindset is everything. Yes. So so you're saying that mindset really has a lot to do with how, how you get up in the morning and how you start your day and how you live that day all day long. And, and the point is, Janelle, and, and this is what people need to understand, life is not smooth. No. Life is a lot of challenges and a lot of obstacles. And I used to say, I, I think it's less now, I think it's cut in half, but uh, since I'm not you know, out in the world everywhere, but um, I used to say, if I don't have at least, tw- at least 12 crises a day, it hasn't been a day. <laughs> and now maybe it's only six, but the point is, Uh, There are obstacles, roadblocks, and challenges every day of your life. 
and it's how you meet those challenges that make the difference. So is there any advice that you give to these women about how to look at some of these obstacles and roadblocks, which I'm sure you've had in your own life? Oh, absolutely. I've had lots of them. I really feel like we grow the most when we're going through difficult times. Uh, we get stronger. It's just like you know, building muscles. If you don't have pain, you don't have gain, they say. So it's looking at, like you said, it's mindset. So how you look at that difficulty or that trial or that emergency or whatever is happening, that crisis it is what makes all the difference. If you look at it as, oh my gosh, the you know, this is terrible. Everything's falling apart. I'm, you know, I'm losing it, you know, then you're going to be a victim to that circumstance and be kind of succumb to the emotional hijacking and all of that and just react. But if you look at it as, okay, things are kind of going awry or they're changing, they're not the way I wanted them to be, but where's the, um, where's the opportunity here? You know, what can I learn from this? What's a new way to look at it? What's this, you know, just always having that open mind that this is here to teach me something. It's not what I wanted. Maybe it's not pleasant. Maybe it's even really hard, but where can I grow from it? What can I learn from it? And how can I approach it to find a solution? There's always another way of looking at something. There's always another solution out there. That's true. That's absolutely true. And I think that, um, you know, um, I I would like to know with your coaching clients, how has um, COVID affected their philosophy their thinking, their approach to things, and so forth. Oh, well, it, it kind of um, varies. I mean, th- some women, they're, they're really having a hard time, and they're really struggling with especially emotions and isolation and feeling like a failure or being worried about the future, uh, being stressed out. Um, and then there are others that are doing great. So uh, it's, again, how you're looking at it. Um, it's not easy for anybody, of course, but you know, it's that mindset. Some people are pivoting. You know, I have one client who owns a winery and she, uh, they couldn't do their testing, their tasting rooms. So because she and I were working on her confidence, she had all these creative ideas in the past that she never acted on because she didn't have enough confidence. And then she would see somebody else doing the very same thing a competitor. Well, this time she decided to act on her idea and it turned out to help her business pivot and still grow in the middle of the pandemic. She came up with this idea of a drive-in tasting and they would get these little cups of wine brought out to them and it really helped her business. So it's looking at how can I make this work for me right now? What's, what's the creative idea, you know, that I can come up with that idea, little cups of wine being brought out to you. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't that a great idea? I know. (laughs) And I don't, I don't drink. So I I, I still think that that's just fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing, since this is a show for women 50 plus, um, did you do any pivoting when you turned 50? Oh my gosh. Yes. We could, we could spend a lot of time on this one. Yeah. In my fifties, I had every symptom there was physically. I mean, everything. I I was a mess. I was irritable. I I had hot flashes all the time. I was just, and we, we had just opened a business. My husband and I opened a brick and mortar business. It was a family fun center with roller skating and laser tag. And I had never done that before. And so I'm learning on the job, how to run a business, how to manage employees, uh, and I'm going through menopause. And so I would have all these, uh, physical things happening and hormonal imbalances. And I would just be so irritable and I was not treating my employees very well, or even my customers. I was just like losing it. And I thought, Oh my gosh, I've got to get a handle on this. And, um, I did manage to, to, uh, start to, uh, self-regulate and, take the time to stop and think, okay, why am I having this reaction? Let me calm down. Let me take a breath. Let me take a step back. And that started really helping me to stop having just those reactions. But then I began to think, well, we went through that and then we, we had to close that business down. So that was a huge, huge thing. It was a big, big thing with our partner. He turned out to be, uh, pretty fraudulent actually. And we went through years of kind of fighting and battling with him. And then we went back to work. And so by the time I was 
just working as an office manager, I was in my late 50s, 57. And I thought, you know, I really don't want to do this until I retire. It's okay. I like the job, but it's there's got to be more. There's got to be more for me. And I began to really search for what do I want to do with the rest of my life? I, I am not the type of person that's just going to sit in retirement and just knit or something. I mean, I just have to be doing something and I, it needs to have purpose and meaning and making a difference in the world. And I have to love what I'm doing. And I really wanted to have my own business because I'm like you, like I like being my own boss. And so I began searching for what is that thing that I am meant to do, you know, and I had to overcome those feelings of, am I too old? Is it too late for me? Uh, and I started looking at what women are doing out there. And I, I learned that there was a lots of women beginning their own businesses in their fifties, sixties, and even seventies. Correct. And that's what yes. we like people to know is that it is never too late to start something. Yes. You're right. Yeah. I mean, even Mary Kay Ash, I think started Mary Kay at 70, I think something like that. Well, you know, I mean, there, even grandma Moses, she didn't start mm -hmm. painting till I think she was 78. So yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. So I started reading that and it really encouraged me. I thought, well, you know what, if they can do it, why can't I do it? You know? And I just flipped that whole story in my mind that I was telling myself. And I, I just said to myself, no, you can do it. You can do whatever you want. You're still alive and breathing and healthy. And why not? Why not go for it? You know? So by that time I was 60. And when I was six, I, I found coaching and I went through the training uh, I had to invest a lot of money and that was scary too, but I took the leap because I really believed in me and I believed in this passion I had to help other people. And I believed that if I invested in myself and took this chance on me, that it was going to pay off. And I would, I would, I just knew that I could do it. And I knew I could learn whatever I didn't know I was going to learn. I just determined I'm going to learn it and I'm going to do it. So I started at 61 with my business, started taking on clients, and I'm 67 today, so. I, well, first of all, you look fabulous. You don't look 67. <laughs> Thank Second you. Second of all, I'm glad that you're so successful. I didn't have the hormonal imbalances you had, but I would just start sweating. Yeah. And I was on stage at the time, and I would come off stage, and people, of course, you know, they always come up to you to ask questions. And I was just pouring, pouring yeah. down sweat. <laughs> And thinking to myself, oh, my gosh, what are they thinking of me? But luckily, no one said anything. But it was tough because I was on stage at that time just about every day. So mm -hmm. uh, that was something. The other thing that um, uh, you said, which is, is I think, uh, important, and, and maybe people don't realize this. They think you have to sacrifice your personal life. You've been married for a very long time. I was married mm -hmm. for 45 years before my husband passed away and very happily married. I mean, I, I'm not even interested in seeing anybody because I had the best, you know? Yeah. And so uh, you can have both. You can have a successful career and you can have a successful home life. And yeah, there's challenges with all of it. But, uh, and you went through a lawsuit. I went through a lawsuit. I went through a lawsuit for 12 years that we just got settled in this last week. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's 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 just stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. And yet you come out the other side. Now, I know you also are doing some kind of a promotion. I'm not sure whether it'll still be on by the time this airs or not. But do you want to talk about that? Sure. I have, I think you're talking about my course, Be uh, confident be real be you possibly um and it's yes, you were looking to do some kind of uh, questionnaire or something oh yes i'm doing yeah i'm doing a survey i'm doing some like market research and asking uh women if they would spend a few minutes with me on the phone so i could ask them some questions around confidence because i am building a course around that uh so i'm gathering like you know information and picking women's brains just to find out what they would be interested in learning that would help them to be more confident in their business or their career or life. Uh, so that's going on right now. And that will help me to build the course that I'm hoping to have out launched by November, maybe. Uh, so good. So where yeah. would they contact you, Janelle, to be able to be part of that survey? 
They can just email me, Janelle, at EmergingLifeCoaching.com. And that's J-A-N-E-L-L-E, correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, I want to make sure we got that in because uh, I know that's important to you. Yes. So, you know, and, and this is something else. I hope all of you are listening to this. Janelle is still learning. She's yes. still researching. She's still reading. She's still taking courses. She still has mentors of her own, coaches of her own, as do I. And that's the mm-hmm. whole point of all of this is that you just keep learning all the time and it is always something new that you can figure out and find and uh that's what she did and so at 67 she is building this incredible coaching practice and helping you in the meantime building your confidence so you just you just can't you just can't beat uh keeping that positive attitude and i know it's hard Some of you are not able to see your grandkids. Some of you still have kids at home. Some of you have kids who are moving back to your (laughs) home. Uh, So there's just all these challenges going on at all all the time. But uh, you just can't stop. So we have about five minutes left to this segment, um, Janelle. Uh, What are some of the other things you'd like to see us talk about for just the next few minutes? Wow, what a great question. Uh, I love what you were encouraging everyone about continuing to learn and grow. Uh, we we could delve more into that or um, maybe how to, how do you go about in, in your 50s or 60s, how do you go about finding your passion? Like many women at this point, they're kind of ending their career. They're, they're finishing up. They're at the top of where they wanted to go. You know, a lot of people, not just women, but and they, it's also a very transitional season where you begin to ask yourself those questions. What, what have I done with my life? Where am I now? It's been 50 years. So, I mean, I remember thinking, oh my gosh, how did that go by so fast? And oh. isn't that the truth that, you know, it's when women hit 30, they go, mm. when they hit 40, they say, oh my gosh. But when they hit 50, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they say, my life's half over. Yeah. Now what? It, it's 50 years. It's half a century. I mean, it just kind of hits you between the eyes and you, I call it a wake up call. I remember that having that, it was like alarm bells going off in my heart. And I was like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> and what do you do? You know, what do you want to do? And figuring that out sometimes can be a mystery. And I've seen a lot of women get frustrated with that and just kind of give up and feel like, oh, well, I guess, you know, there is no purpose. I don't have a purpose, I've heard women say. And I just feel like saying, no, you do. Everybody does. So, well, you know. You know, so many women uh, by that time maybe have dealt with the death of their parents or the aging of their parents. So they're, there's kind of, you know, that sandwich generation that's talked about. They're taking care of parents. They're taking care of kids yep. uh, because they've moved back home. And so, you know, they're frustrated, they're tired. Um, But the most important thing is to take time by yourself and just um, think, take an hour, take 30 minutes, take 15 minutes, just sit in a quiet place and think. And think about, you know, what Janelle has just said. Oh my gosh, all this time has gone by. Who am I? Uh, What am I doing with my life? Where else can I go? What do I love? What gets me excited? Uh, What am I passionate about? Uh, You know, what what skills do I have? What have people complimented me on all these years? You know, you talked about knitting, but I have to tell you, I just (laughs) talked to a woman for my uh, show yesterday, and she is uh, uh, a a knitter extraordinaire, has has a show called Knitter Matters. And all these people follow her. I mean, hundreds uh, on Facebook um, on her knitting skills and knitting techniques. And she's got all these people who are, you know, buying yarn from her and just unbelievable things that you wouldn't even think about. So um, don't sell yourself short on anything. There's a lot of things that you can do. I want to remind everybody before we take our break to subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Uh, and on YouTube for any new content we put out. Um, And I want to um, remind you that uh, Janelle is at um, emergingcoach.com. And I also 
uh, or emerging life, emerging life coaching. Coaching, com. yes. Yeah. And uh, I'm at spunkyobra.com. So um, we'll see you in our next segment. Um, we're we're really excited about having you with us today, and uh, Janelle is just the perfect person to take you on your next journey. So be aware and be a part of her survey. I mean, where else can you get a chance to predict and uh, prescribe what might be in a course that you might help design? I mean, what's better than that? So hold on. We'll be back in our next segment. 